We're so happy to be here with you. you. My wife forced me out of the house after I took her home. You're English, right? Because of the last two talks of all the English army. Yes, despite not knowing any English answers. I upgraded, though, to New England. Um, I will speak for three minutes. Okay. Oh, speak for four. No, I'll speak. Okay, I'll speak for four minutes. <laughs> and and please, somebody start clapping after four minutes. Let's actually do this from because it's it's a joy for Manolis to hear from all of us. So let's let's all say how long we want to talk for. Um, the secret of life is 42. Now you already knew that. Um, it's art and science. And I say that because when we think about, if you think about the names of people you can remember who lived 400 years ago, can you remember a business leader? Can you remember a politician? We can probably all think about scientists and artists, many. Da Vinci, um, Newton, that's not 400 years ago, but Galileo. Those are the names. So that, I think, is the heuristic for what really matters to humankind. What, what endures 400, 500 years later? And since I'm a total neophyte and know nothing about art, I can only speak about science. And my pet theory about science is that it's not about observation. It's about imagination. And a lot of the public who don't practice science, like probably everyone in this room practices science, think that science is about observation, that you do an experiment like we did in school to discover Newton's laws where you roll a ball down a ramp and you record the time that the ball started and then the time that it made it to the halfway mark and the time it made, and you can derive F equals MA <coughs> from those numbers, from those observations. But that's not how Newton derived F equals MA. That's not how Newton derived the law of gravitation. He initially had this imagination. The story of the apple falling down and hitting him on the head might be apocryphal, but he did at one point daydream about an object falling down on Earth and look up at the moon and think about whether those could be the same thing. And then after he had this leap of imagination, it's almost, if you think about it, similar to the leap that Leonardo da Vinci had before coming up with an amazing piece of art. He then said, how could I disprove this imagination? How could I conduct an experiment? And for a scientific leap to be useful, it has to be something that can be falsifiable. And then you go to look for the numbers. And so that's my idea about life, that it's about art and it's about science, and that science is about imagination. And then falsifying.